Hey guys, it's Jared from Mythica Media here. Just want to make a quick video talking about the function buttons on the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. There's these three function buttons that you can use for your different shoots. So yeah, let's get into that. Okay, so this is just a little example setup here. So to go into those presets, you go to the menu button here. So you go menu, you got to go along to the setup tab. So you go setup, and then you scroll along, and it'll be on this page here where you've got function one, two and three and all this other things here um, so these function one two and three they correspond to those those three buttons on the top just next to the on off switch so you can use those uh, externally instead of having to go into the menu which is the whole point of this now you can make the functions behave in two different ways you can use a preset which I'll get into in a second so there's a particular um, setting on your camera that you be able to preset and go back to it or there's a toggle so there's uh, another a separate function that you'll be able to toggle on and off by pressing that button so um, let's just go through what those ones are so it's false color um, so you know that uh, toggles on the false color I'll show you what that does so let's we've set to false color so function one is false color when I turn that on you got the false colors on and um, for those of you that use this, it's for exposure and things like that. So there you go. Um, so you can change that to zebra. So again, for exposure, you can see uh, where your highlights are. So function one is on exposure. And uh, so let's just change the ISO so I show you the zebras. So when I pump that up, obviously, the more it is, the more it gets uh, blown out. So you've got grid as well, which displays the grid information on the display. Um, safe area guide, that will show you borders. So let's let's see that. So you see those borders come up. And obviously, uh, you can change those here, but I won't get into too much detail about that. Um, Off-speed recording, so that's changing your, your frame rates to go to higher frame rates. Um, you have to preset that in a different window uh, back in the record window, but that's where it is. So yeah, that off-speed recording is not too useful because you've already got the high frame rate button there. Um, you've got your OIS, that's your, your um, uh, image stabilization. Uh, clean feed, so that's uh, useful if you've got an external monitor. Um, and by the way, these parameters can actually be applied to say just, like assuming you've got an external monitor, they can be applied either just to the monitor or to this, so that's really handy as well. So if you've got a like a director's monitor and they don't want to see the information that a DP, for instance, wants to see, you can make it go only to the monitor. And that's why clean feed is there too. Um, same thing with the display LUT, that's using it for if you've got the inbuilt LUT feature and you want to see what your LUT's going to look like for the image. Um, again, you can use it just for the monitor or just for this LCD screen. Um, so with this one, sort of difficult to see because it's a little blown out, but let's, let me change the exposure a bit so we can see the background. And then you can see it a little better. Yep, so just pressing this button turns the LUT on and off. And obviously, when you go into the LUT tab, you can change whatever LUT that is, but whichever LUT you've set, you'll be able to turn it on and off with that function button, which is really cool. Um, frame guides, again, focus assist, so your um, focus peaking, things like that. And then we're back to false color. So there's all those different features. Now with the preset, these are more your, um, your other functions like uh, your frame rate, RS, white balance, ISO, shutter. Um, I was a little disappointed. It's not like the GH4 where you can um, set all of those settings on a particular function you can only change one of these features so let's say um, for instance I was shooting uh, something on a day and I needed to shoot uh, both outdoor and indoor and I wanted my white balance to be uh, two different settings I could do that so we go white balance let's go function one white balance let's say let's set it for indoors so assuming you've got like tungsten lights, so that's about uh, 3200K, let's say that. 
so we can save that. You can also change the tint, by the way. Um, so that's in function one, and then we'll have function two. We'll go preset, and we'll change it to daylight, which is roughly 5600 Kelvin. Just get up there, yep. Yeah, so let's say that. And then, so when you're out here, you can go function one, and it is, it's might be hard to see on your end, but you can see the white balance changing. So again, something pretty handy. Um, you can even do it for iris as well. Uh, only if you, obviously only if you've got an electronic lens. I, for this purpose, I have put on an electronic lens. So let's go the widest, which is 3.5 on this lens. Let's do four actually, we'll go four for function two and for function one we'll go, let's say 19, F19. Okay, so function one, just go on F19 and then function two, three point, or four, excuse me, four. And so we can toggle between those. So having those um, function buttons on the camera makes it a little bit more uh, versatile for say run and gun stuff as opposed to more stricter filmmaking style. Um, definitely a feature I like. A little disappointed that it's not like, say, the GH4, where you can have multiple settings on just one preset, so that when you turn it on, you can set it straight to that for that particular style of shooting, whatever it may be. Um, with this one, you can only adjust individual parameters, but still a great feature nonetheless. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I'll be making more videos in the coming weeks. Cheers. Bye-bye.